The OnCloud X3 versus the OnCloud Pulse. So four major differences to note between these shoes include number one, their midsole construction. So both of these shoes are built with the Helion foam from On, and they both feature the CloudTech midsole tech. However, the way they're constructed is a little bit different and how they're gonna feel while you're training. So in the OnCloud X3, you have this more traditional CloudTech midsole. So you see this in models like the OnCloud 5. A lot of folks have come to enjoy this type of midsole, but essentially there's a little bit more of a break throughout the entire of this shoe. So as you can see, the cloud tech here kind of breaks at the forefoot, the midfoot, and back here in the heel. In the cloud pulse, you have a little bit more of like what I would call a traditional midsole. So you still have that cloud tech. However, it's a lot more solid. And so the cloud pulse is designed to be a good shoe for hit training on basically language this, this shoe as their like first ever gym shoe. And so it makes sense why this midsole is a little bit more built out. It feels a little bit more robust. And in the context of stability and how each shoe feels under your feet, I do notice that the cloud tech midsole in the cloud pulse has a little bit more of like a responsive bounce to it. Whereas in the Cloud X3, I feel like you could feel the ground a tiny bit more. And do note when I say feel the ground, it's not as much as a barefoot shoe, but it's a little bit more in the context between these two shoes. The second major difference to note between these models is their outsole constructions. So in the OnCloud X3, because we have that break at the CloudTech midsole here throughout the entirety of the shoe, you have a little bit less tread throughout. So on this model, you have rubber tread up here in the forefoot and back here in the heel, and this midfoot is exposed foam. It's not the most durable if you plan to train outdoors or if you plan to use this shoe a lot on concrete. In the Cloud Pulse here, you have a full rubber tread up here in the forefoot and then back here in the heel, and then you have a break here in the midfoot. However, there's a nice little indent here at the midfoot here so the exposed foam isn't going to likely be nearly as much of an issue regarding concrete friction and breaking down and that makes the outsole in the cloud pulse i think a little bit better regarding long-term durability the third major difference to note between these shoes is their upper constructions. So in the Cloud X3, you have a reinforced three layer mesh here. And now this upper is a little bit more low profile. So this shoe, I think, hugs the foot a tiny bit more. It feels a little bit more sock-like compared to the Cloud Pulse. Back here on the boot, it's a little bit more rigid regarding its construction as well. So the midfoot here can be a little bit annoying when you're breaking the shoe in, but overall this mesh breathes really well. It's very lightweight and it sits a little bit lower compared to the Cloud Pulse. In the Cloud Pulse, you have a reinforced mesh upper with some synthetic overlays around the forefoot, midfoot, and then back here in the heel. The heel's a little bit more built out and it's padded, and it's a little bit more high volume. So if you like having a bit more room in your upper, this can be a good option to look into compared to the Cloud X3. The fourth major difference to note between these shoes is how they're going to perform. So in the Cloud Pulse, you're gonna have a little bit more of a bias towards light strength training and HIIT workouts, and more like your class style workouts. This shoe, I think, has done a pretty good job supporting my multi-directional movements, giving me a nice level of responsiveness and energy return. And if you like a little bit more of like robust built out shoes regarding their midsole constructions, the Cloud Pulse is going to be the best option for you. In the Cloud X3, it's kind of like this hybrid do it all style shoe. It's not as much of a daily driver as the Cloud 5, but you can train in this model. So for this shoe, you're not gonna have nearly as much lateral support. However, I think the Cloud Tech midsole is a tiny bit more stable compared to the Cloud Pulse. And do note, I say tiny there, because I think the only difference between the stability, because both these shoes do compress pretty easily, is in the Cloud Pulse, you have a higher stack height. So I think you do notice that rock a little bit more. And because it's more of a hit shoe, you have a bit more toe spring compared to the Cloud X3, relatively speaking, when you're trying to ground the feet when training. So all that said, the Cloud X3, I think will be a good option for somebody who wants that shoe for travel, some daily wear, some lifting, and some cross training. And then if you want that shoe for hit workouts and classes, the Cloud Pulse will be your best bet. And then if you need a shoe for short runs, I think both of these models can work. The Cloud Pulse is gonna give you a slightly more plush ride compared to the Cloud X3 though. All right, so now let's talk about some performance differences between these shoes. So which model is gonna be better for lifting? So neither of these shoes is gonna be great for heavy lifting. However, if you just need one of these models for light to moderate lifting, both can work. Now that said, I think that you can load the Cloud X3 a tiny bit heavier. And I think that's solely because there's less stack height in this shoe. Both of these midsoles are gonna compress fairly easily when you start loading. So for example, with deadlifts in these shoes, Anything over like 275 pounds, I start to notice the midsole compress. In the Cloud Pulse here at 225, I started to notice that midsole compress. So you do get a little bit more wiggle room in the Cloud X3. And then when it comes to like single leg work and like squats and whatnot, both these shoes can work pretty well, especially if you're just doing like free weight movements with dumbbells and kettlebells and whatnot. But if you're getting heavy with a barbell, I would say also probably cap your loading around 275 pounds in both of these shoes, just because I think you will notice that midsole compress a little bit. And I don't want you losing balance or just having a shoe that's way too squishy for that 
context. So with all that said, which model's taking the win here for lifting? I would give the outright edge to the Cloud X3. However, if you're not planning to go crazy heavy, both of these models can work. Now, which model is better for versatile training? That's where I'm gonna give the edge to the Cloud Pulse. This model gives you a little bit more support regarding its lateral structure. You have this reinforced lateral layer here. With the increased upper volume, you also have a bit more space in the shoe regarding giving your feet a little bit more room to do their thing. So if you do have a higher end step, for example, I think the Cloud Pulse will feel pretty good and still give you a good amount of security. And then you also have this more padded and rigid boot back here. So in the context of versatile training, the Cloud Pulse, I think just does a slightly better job across the board. You're not gonna have as much spillover issues. And with this model's midsole and speedboard tech and outsole, I think it does a little bit better across the board too for things like sled pushes and pulls on turf, kettlebell workouts, full body circuits and stuff like that. And if you like models like the Nike Air Zoom TR1 or the Puma Power Nitro Squared, this model is gonna be, feel very similar in the context of giving you that built out midsole. The Cloud X3 can work for cross training and versatile workouts as well. My only two knocks against this shoe for versatile training, and these have always been consistent with this model for whatever reason, is they're not gonna be the best for lateral movements, especially power focused lateral movements. So skater strides or any form of like get up where you're really digging into to that forefoot and driving through laterally. You can have a little bit of spill over here because we don't have a super rigid lateral support here. And then also this Cloud Tech midsole can kind of compress and you could spill over as well. And then also the second reason why I don't necessarily always love this shoe for versatile training is the break in process can be a pain up here. So at the midfoot, this can rub when you're breaking this shoe in. This typically subsides as you get a little bit more wear in the shoe, but it is one of those annoying things that the Cloud Pulse I have yet to have an issue with. Now, which model is best for short runs? Both these shoes have worked exceptionally well for short runs. So both these models, I think you could run like two, three, four-ish miles in and honestly have them be pretty dang comfortable. Now that said, if I had to give the edge to one of these shoes, I would say it really depends on what you want out of your ride. So in the Cloud X3, I think you're gonna get a little bit more of like a stable or denser ride. You're still gonna have some cushion. That's why I do like the Cloud X3 for hybrid style workouts, but you're gonna have a little bit more of ground feel in the shoe compared to the Clown Pulse, which has a higher stack height and a more built out foam midsole. Plus you do have a little bit of heel beveling in here and toe spring. So if you're doing, for example, interval runs in a class, that's where the Cloud Pulse I think is gonna excel. And if you just like more structure to your training shoes for your short runs, the Cloud Pulse can also excel in that context. Now, which model is better for daily wear? That's where I'm gonna give the edge to the Cloud X3. Don't get me wrong, the Cloud Pulse is very comfortable. However, I feel like the shoe's a little bit tougher to dress up at times. And with its more built out midsole, it just feels a little bit more clunky for daily wear context. Whereas with the Cloud X3, this is a model that I often like kind of describe as like that travel style shoe. It looks pretty good. It's a little bit more low profile and it's comfortable for walking or standing for longer durations of time. And because you get a little bit more flexibility through this model's outsole and midsole, I think it makes it a little bit easier to just wear this model and have it articulate with the foot and not necessarily have it feel overbearing over time. So in the context of the price between these shoes, you can expect to pay $150 in both of these models. Now, is that price point fair? I think it really comes down to how you plan to use your shoes. If you want to do it all shoe that you can also travel with, the Cloud X3 I think can be a great option. And then if you want a more class focused shoe with a bit more responsiveness and structure to the midsole, that's where the Cloud Pulse can be a really good call. Now, do I think these shoes are top performers in the gym compared to all the trainers I've reviewed? No, not necessarily. And I do have a video documenting some of my favorite cross training shoes. So if you're not necessarily sold on the on models, I think there are better options out there depending on what you're looking for. For, but 150 for both of these shoes, and that's pretty standard for more premium training shoes in this day and age. So when it comes to the sizing and fit of the Cloud X3 and the Cloud Pulse, I think most folks should be safe going true to size into these models. The lengths are pretty consistent, and in both of these shoes, I wear a size 10. I have a foot width that hovers between like an E width and double E width foot, depending on the company and its sizing chart. And I also have like a normal arch and a normal instep. With the Cloud X3, I do notice the arch a little bit more in this model, and I think the toe box is a tad more tapered. So if you like a flatter feeling shoe or if you have a wider shoe, that would be something to consider with the Cloud X3. It's not necessarily the widest shoe on the market. In the Cloud Pulse, because we have a higher upper volume, I think this model will be a little bit better for thicker feet and higher insteps. And then also you have a bit of arch in this shoe, but I think because the midsole does compress super easy here, you don't feel it as abruptly. And then also the toe box feels a little bit more spacious. And I think that has to do with the wider platform of the shoe's midsole and outsole and the higher upper volume. So if you do have
have slightly thicker feet or if your feet are a little bit wider and you're debating between these shoes, the Cloud Pulse might be the better bet for that context. Maui is back for another cameo and he is once again asking me to tell you to subscribe to the channel. It helped put Tibble in his bowl, but that said, let's get back to the review. All right, now let's compare the weight heel toe drop and insoles in the Cloud X3 versus the Cloud Pulse. For my size 10 shoe here in the Cloud X3, we have a weight of 9.1 ounces. In the Cloud Pulse, we have a weight of 11.6 ounces. The heel to toe drop in the Cloud Pulse is eight millimeters and the heel to toe drop in the Cloud X3 is eight millimeters. The Cloud X3 has a thin foam removal insole and the insole in the Cloud Pulse does not come out. All right, now let's do a construction breakdown of the Cloud X3 and the Cloud Pulse. So up here in the toe box, you have an extended outsole layer that wraps up on both shoes. Now, when it comes to toe box durability and structure, in the Cloud X3, you do have an internal toe guard, but that mesh is pretty vulnerable if you do any toe dragging movements. In the Cloud Pulse over here, you do have a synthetic overlay and a similar internal toe guard, which makes this shoe have a bit more rigidity through the toe box. And you also have this lateral overlay here to give you an additional sidewall when doing lateral training. Looking at the upper in the Cloud Pulse, you have a reinforced mesh upper that runs throughout the entirety of this shoe. Again, you have that synthetic overlay here around the toe box, and then on the midfoot here on the medial and lateral side. And then back here in the boot, you also have a bit more structure and padding to it. Looking at the Cloud X3, you have a three layer mesh. You have that X lacing system down here. And this mesh is pretty consistent throughout until you get to the synthetic overlay at the midfoot on the lateral and medial side. The boot in the Cloud X3 is a little bit more low profile and it has a bit of structure, but there isn't nearly as much padding to it. That's why this midfoot here can rub a little bit on the foot. Looking at the tongue and lacing system, in the Cloud X3, you have a padded mesh tongue. This tongue also can be a little bit aggressive at times. And then looking at the laces, you have one, two, three, four, five laces that go down and the tongue has a gusset to it. Tongue security in the shoe can be a little bit of an issue if you wear them looser and you're doing lateral work. So keep that in mind if you plan to do explosive work in the Cloud X3. Looking at the Cloud Pulse, you have a much more thin mesh tongue. It's similar to tongues like used in a Nike Metcon 4, so that very thin material. It's not as wide as the Cloud X3's tongue as well, and there is a gusset to it. Looking at the laces, you have one, two, three, four, five core outlets that go up with a six back here for lace lock, and then you have two additional tongue loops here for security. I find the tongue security in the Cloud Pulse to be a little bit better overall compared to the Cloud X3. Looking at the midsole, so you have that Helion foam that runs throughout the entirety of the shoe's midsole, and you have that Cloud Tech midsole construction throughout. In this model, you have a bit more of an arch here. So as you can see, there's a bit more of a divot, and this midsole is a lot more thick, and the shoe also utilizes on Speedboard Tech, which is also present in the Cloud X3. Looking at the Cloud X3's midsole, you have a more traditional Cloud Tech midsole that is pretty common in a lot of Ons, very popular staple shoes, and it's built with that Helion foam as as well. And then once again, this model does have that speedboard tech as well. And then you have rubber tread up here on the forefoot and heel. In the midfoot here, you do have exposed foam. So keep that in mind if you do plan to train outside on concrete because that friction can cause that part of the shoe to break down a little bit quicker. Looking at the outsole in the Cloud Pulse. You have a thicker rubber outsole up here in the forefoot and heel. So as you can see, this material is actually pretty thick. So I don't think this is gonna break down super quick for most folks, especially if you do plan to do more outdoor training or even wear this shoe for short runs outdoors or even for daily wear. I think they can feel a little bit clunky for that, but I think they should last a while regardless. Once again, the Cloud X3 does have a removable insole. The Cloud Pulse does not, but if you have additional questions on these shoes constructions, drop a comment down below. All right, guys, that wraps up my comparison of the Cloud Pulse and the Cloud X3. If you want a shoe for a little bit of everything and then also traveling and just walking, the Cloud X3 can be an awesome option. And then if you need a shoe for class workouts and hit and short runs, the Cloud Pulse can be a good call. Now that said, if you have additional questions on either of these models and how you plan to use them, and you wanna make sure you're getting the best shoe for your investment, drop a comment down below and I can answer whatever you have, or reach out to me personally on Instagram, whichever you prefer. And as always, y'all, drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.